What is going on, Pacer Nation? Welcome back to another episode of Setting the Pace. We're recording this on July 6, 2023, the day that Tyrese Halliburton signed his five-year max extension. I got Michael. The J is for Jairus Fachi. Fachi, what's going on, brother? Oh, man, today it just felt real. That press conference, you see Halliburton showing up in the blazer, just talking about, this is like what we dreamed of, where it's like, <laughs> we got our guy, he's inked the extension, and now th there's nothing that could stop it. And Alex, we found out some good details about yes. this contract that made me feel pretty good. You want to say what those details were? Yeah, so we got a five-year max extension, with which is around $207 million, but he can receive up to 260 which you already know that. However, that five-year max extension has zero player options, so oh, yeah. he can't opt out in the fifth year and you know be an unrestricted free agent. And he's got a fifteen percent trade kicker. So shout out Tony East for getting the details on that, putting it out on social media for us to check that out. But thought that was really great to hear because that basically means it's almost going to be impossible to trade Tyrese Halliburton, especially with the way the new CBA is. So the Pacers right now have done a terrific job of locking up their franchise guy and this contract just makes you feel, you know, like you're on top of the world right now, knowing that this guy is going to be here long-term. Exactly. That had been the question for the last few days, ever since they came to an agreement. It was, is there a player option or not? Because sometimes we see players able to negotiate for a player option or in Bradley Beal's case, a uh, no trade clause. Yeah. No, there was none of the no trade clause in this deal, but the Pacers were able to include those all NBA incentives, and I think that that was enough for Tyrese to say, hey, you know what, I can earn some big-time money here, up to the $260 million that you mentioned, and I'm just happy that the Pacers were able to you know, come to that agreement and leave out that player option. And you mentioned about that 50% trade kicker. That would for sure you know, raise his, his salary big-time for any team that was looking to acquire him or even just... Just, you know, in general, it just felt like the Pacers said, hey, look, say there was ever some scenario that we're moving on, you would be, you know, rewarded for it. You can't imagine a scenario that the Pacers would ever move on from Tyrese Halliburton. No, not a, not a chance. The way that these guys were, glow, you know, glowing about him and gushing about him, Rick Carlisle, I mean, Rick Carlisle loves this guy, and there's no doubt about oh, yeah. it. Kevin Pritchard does too. Kevin Pritchard, you know, made a great comment basically saying like, you have great people in this world and you have great basketball players in this world. We have one that's both. We have Tyrese Halliburton and, you know, Tyrese just being an awesome human being on and off the floor and being so good at basketball is just what, what you want from your franchise player. And then just, you know, like Rick Carlisle said, he understands not only what it means to be the best player on the team, but to be the franchise player, like what you represent, the responsibility that it comes with. It's huge. And so, you know, hearing those two representatives for the Pacers kind of talk about Tyrese and then Tyrese talk about his journey here and him getting super emotional talking about his mom. If you go back and watch the press conference where he's talking about how impactful his mom has been on his career and him getting here, it's hard not to get a little bit choked up yourself just because, you know, we all, you know, the most of us here know what it's like to have that relationship with our mother and and how special that bond is. And so I think I could just relate to it because I'm close with my mom. I know you're Me close too. with your mom, Fudge. Oh, and yeah. so it's just like, yeah, they're like your biggest supporters, you know? So it was awesome to hear that. Obviously, the rest of his uh, family and his friends were there to support. But Tyrese has had a lot of great things to say, Fachi. And I'm curious if there's a couple of things that stood out to you that made you feel like, man, I love this guy. Oh, yeah. The, the best part of it all was they were talking about Hey, this is six more years for you. And, and Halliburton immediately on the spot said, hopefully a lot more than that. Mm. And I just feel like I can't remember someone in Indiana, like a star player saying that in a while. That made me feel good inside to say, all right, you know what? I want the guy who's saying I'm looking past six years. I want to be a pacer for life. Sure, he might not have said that, but it, it felt like that was, uh, you know, what was implied. And then also, he just really wants to continue to give back to the community. It didn't take Halliburton longer than what felt like a weekend to dive into the community. I remember he immediately started attending high school basketball games. Like You could find him just out in the, in the community, not one of those guys who's going to be spending all of his time in L.A. or anything like that. He wants to be a part of what we're building here, and that makes me feel real good, but also – Let's just let's just have it summed up to he wants to get back to winning. 
He has his own expectations and really feels like the Pacers are building something now that can really start to compete instead of saying those things like, well, you know, we're going to take a day at a time. Like, nope, he wants to go for it. And I think the whole fan base is right behind him. Yeah, and I think the Pacers put themselves in a great spot too with how they've kind of rebuilt this roster where they can try to win now but still continue to rebuild by not getting themselves locked into these players long terms uh, like the Bruce Browns or the Obi Toppins or the guys they brought in and still having that flexibility. But yeah, Tyrese, man, it was just really awesome to see that from him because you could just tell like he wants to be here. He wants to win here. He talked about, I think Greg Doyle asked him like, why Indiana? We've already seen other guys leave this franchise yep. before. Why do you want to stay here? And he said, I'm a Midwest guy. So I personally just feel like at the end of the day, the Pacers got their guy locked up. You said it best, you know, him saying that he wanted to be here hopefully more than the six years that he signed up for. That made me want to run through a brick wall for the guy. I thought about you saying something like that. And I was like, man, I'm trying to tweet something out. That's not cringe. Like, I don't want to say I was about to cry when I heard that, but it's like, you know, you got some goosebumps. You just, you start listening to him saying that it just gets you a little bit emotional. Like, man, we've wanted someone to love this franchise and we love it as fans. And we finally have someone that we can gravitate towards in Tyrese Halliburton. So yeah, you know, I'm sorry if I'm a 30 year old man over here acting like a five-year-old gushing over Tyrese Halliburton wanting to be the face of the franchise. But really, Fach, if you look at it, we have yet to have a true face of the franchise for a decade plus since Reggie Miller. So not saying that Tyrese is going to be here for a decade. We can't predict the future, but it feels like he wants to be. And I don't feel like we've ever felt like such an ringing endorsement from a player about Indiana like we heard from Tyrese Halliburton today. No, it's true. And look, I'm going to come out of left field with a reference from Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. But I don't know if anybody remembers that emotional episode where Will Smith's dad keeps leaving him. And he he turns to Uncle Phil and he said, why doesn't he want me? Well, you know what? We've gone through that. And this time around... We're getting the love back. Yes, Halliburton sir. wants us. He wants to be a pacer. He said, I want to be here. I want to change something. He wants to change the perception of the Indiana Pacers. And it didn't take him long to do that. Yes, the Pacers haven't had the wins to back it up yet. It hasn't been entirely long, but everybody sees what we're building here. They see how fun this team can be, how young and athletic they are. People are starting to say, this is going to be one of my favorite different league past teams. I can't remember people saying that in the past. It's just, there wasn't this flair sexiness to a, a Brogdon to Sabonis. There, there just really wasn't, but Halliburton can, can make the, you know, he can make plays out of thin air and, mm-hmm. and some of his passes are highlights. We're not talking about this man doesn't need a dunk more than once or twice on a year to be able to get on sports center quite often with the passes that he makes so it makes you really appreciate the actual game of basketball which we've talked about he is an absolute junkie of and loves the game and you could see it every night he takes the court yeah for sure and i will just say this before he got up there for his press conference a lot of the media members and reporters for this team had video tyrese walking up to the stage but before that on the jumbotron they had highlights of Tyrese with the Pacers behind Triple H's theme song from WWE. And if you know anything about Tyrese in our intro video that we have, he is rocking a Triple H shirt. So True. that is one of Tyrese's favorite wrestlers of all time. And if you know that song, it's time to play the game. It's a fun song to like watch. But I think Scott Agnes probably had the best angle of the video because he was able to get Tyrese in there with the highlights a little bit. And Tyrese was just like, you know, really enjoying that moment. And I'm thinking to myself, This is just so cool to see. Like, it's so awesome that we've got this all-star on our team locked up for the next six years, and he wants to win. He wants to be here, and he just embraces this franchise for who we are. He's excited about the players that we have coming in, and I think at the end of the day, Fachi, you're right. He wants to start winning now, and I think we're going to start winning because if you have Tyrese Halliburton on your team, you're instantly better. So the ceiling, I mean, for Tyrese, it's through the roof still. Uh, our good friend, Rhett Bauer, texted me today and said, at the end of this contract, is Tyrese Halliburton the second greatest pacer of all time? And I said, you know, I, I'm, I'm leaning no right now just because there's a lot of great pacers and I don't want to, uh, you know, misspeak on anybody. But in, in six years, we have no idea what heights Tyrese Halliburton can reach. What he's doing already at this point right now at just the age of 23, pretty exciting to think about what he could be doing at the age of 29. 
Really is. We, we mentioned it the other day. Alex, if he stays healthy, he breaks Mark Jackson's single season franchise record. He's breaking in it year this year. One. He's breaking year it this year. One. Oh, he's going to shatter it because you can see what he did is he set a Pacers franchise record for assists per game. Yeah. I mean, if this guy's healthy, that record stands no chance. So he feels like your annual all star. He feels like your future all NBA player. It's just, and I mean, we're going to. To get on, we're going to get into next, but this man can recruit. He can recruit. Yes. And the other guy who had a press conference a- afterwards talked about that. But one thing that I think is, is fun to point out is they asked Halliburton, what did it mean to be involved in decisions? And Halliburton said it meant the world to him and that this is his life. He loves basketball. He's going to be at Summer League supporting the young guys. He wants to be involved in helping and he feels that he's the one that needs to make it work on the court. He feels that there's a great group of guys that can shock some people, but they have higher expectations and they're going to work hard. So that made me feel like it's like, it's it's not that he's just demanding all this stuff. He wants to be involved. He loves to be involved. And he's putting that pressure on himself to, hey, if you ask for a player, I got to make it work if they get me that player. And that I love to hear. Yeah, Bruce Brown is an exciting young player. I mean, people think that he's a little bit older, but he's only 26 years old. Fits in perfectly with this team. And you could just tell he wants to be a Pacer. And I thought it was interesting that only the Knicks and the Pacers were the two teams that he got calls from. Me too. Maybe the Pacers offer was so good. <laughs> After the second phone call that he took, he was like, yep, I'm good. I made my decision. And and Tyrese being a part of that recruitment's huge. I think, you know, We've talked about it before, and I think there was a stat that was out on Twitter, and maybe you just mentioned it, and I didn't hear you because I was reading something, but uh, the efficient field goal percentage in transition. Oh, yeah. You know, Bruce Brown, number two, Tyrese, number three, or vice versa, and Obi Toppin, I think, is number one in that list. So yep. all those guys having such efficient field goal percentages in transition is huge for this team, and we have yet to get the confirmation on Obi Toppin's trade, but we do know what the picks are going to be, and we'll get to that in a little bit. But I think that knowing that you have a, a team that wants to play fast, play the style that he wants to be a part of, it's cool. And he's been able to play multiple positions throughout his career. So you know that if you want to go smaller, you can do this. If you want to go a little bit bigger, you can play him at the two. Like, he's a very versatile player, even though he's only six foot four. He plays much bigger than his height and his size. So I think overall, Bruce Brown, uh, there's been a lot of discussion on local radio on how they go about figuring out this rotation. Uh, we've debated on it. We'll probably do that later in in the next week or something like that, talking about how all these guys are going to find minutes and who's going to start and who's not. But I think Bruce Brown being the highest paid pacer right now for this season, he's going to get a lot of playing time and he's going to showcase why the Pacers were so aggressive in bringing him here. And I think overall, you could just tell that Pritchard and, and Carlisle were very excited to have him. And it wasn't like some kind of show they were putting on. Like, no, they were very happy to give this guy $20 plus million because he's a really smart basketball player that's going to make this team that much better. And he's not going to make them a championship-level team. He's going to make them a, a, a higher floor team. And that's huge for what the Pacers can get in free agency with the amount of players that were out there and that re-signed with the teams that they were already on. So um, I think Bruce Brown was a great get for the Pacers. And, yeah, I mean, I'm excited about it. We talked about it already in depth about what he can bring to the team. But just hearing him talk, knowing he's going to pick number 11. Uh, I forgot that Tristan Thompson were number 11 for like three games yeah. after we traded Sabonis. So it's like that number has been worn now three times in like the last year, a uh, year and a half um, by three different guys. So pretty cool. Yeah, they said the Pacers were looking for toughness. They were looking for a defense. And they were looking for winning. And that Bruce Brown's name kept coming to the top. They got this deal done very quickly. Obviously, I was surprised when he said he only had two calls, but maybe it just shows that how quickly this deal really did get done. And I think that, you know, I don't remember who was asking him what made him pick the Pacers. Obviously, Bruce Brown was not going to say money. (laughs) You know, he said, you know, hey, I like what they're building over here. You know, uh, take steps forward. And that the Pacers basically said Bruce was their number one target. He was their number one. We believe it. Ah, I don't know. I don't know. They always tend to say those things. So number one target you know, once like, Harrison Barnes re-signed with the Kings. Exactly. That is exactly <laughs> how I took it. Where it's like, <laughs> I think Harrison Barnes might have been number one target. You pivoted quickly. So technically that statement is true. But this is someone who played under Jim Laranega at Miami 
who has ties to Rick Carlisle. So uh, Jim recruited Carlisle to UVA. So I feel like Carlisle was getting that scoop on Bruce Brown and what kind of player he is. And I always love when players get that real behind the scenes of who you're getting. And they got someone that immediately wanted to go to work, was asking Carlisle. They went out to dinner, said, hey, yes. I want to work out tomorrow. 6.30 in the morning. In the morning. He was in the gym. Yeah, exactly. Big difference is 6.30 p.m. That could tell you a lot about someone. But between Jeff uh, dra- uh, drafting Jairus Walker, who wanted to get out there and work out, and signing Bruce Brown, who wanted to work out immediately, these are guys that are not taking this opportunity for granted. They're getting to work. We keep hearing these stories about players that want to do that. I think this is kind of the new mold of the, you know, the Pacers are trying to go after. I think so. Get guys that want to work. Get guys that want to continue to get better and improve and aren't divas. Sorry if that offends people by saying that, but don't get out, go out there and get guys that are kind of stuck on themselves, but get guys that are in love with the game of basketball because you can tell when a guy loves the game of basketball versus they love being a basketball player and getting paid millions of dollars. It's just some are basketball junkies and some are not. So I think at the end of the day, the Pacers have identified players that want to work hard, that will be more of a team player, willing to take more of a sacrifice to the betterment of the team. And that's what they've addressed here with Bruce Brown, which is why I don't think it's a lock that he starts. But like I said, we'll debate that later because I don't think he's going to be like, I had a man to start. I'm making the most money. I think, no, I got my money. I'm here to work hard. Whatever you're asking me, coach. That's how I feel. I think Jairus Walker, same way. Tyrese Halliburton came in here, ready to work from day one. You can tell he's added on muscle. He's looking a little bit heavier than he used to. This is a guy that wants to get stronger and better overall. So yeah, I think it just starts with Tyrese and works its way down. And if Tyrese was that pivotal in recruiting Bruce Brown and the Pacers were able to give him that nice of a contract, then hey, Smart move by both sides, and I'm glad to hear that that relationship is so strong between Bruce and Tyrese. Tyrese, the recruiter, we felt that he was the one that could make the change and get guys to Indiana. It starts with Bruce Brown. I can't wait to see who it might end with one day. But Halliburton playing for Team USA, that's an opportunity to you know make some great relationships. Yes, sir. And I feel that as the Pacers start to win. Winning is going to speak pretty loudly. Right now, when, when you're you know, across the league, they might not see the Pacers as this, this major threat. But if the Pacers are to get to the playoffs, that's going to be a lot of eyes on this team and exposure. And I think that that's going to help long-term get better talent to Indiana. But for right now, even Rick Carlisle you know, labeled Bruce Brown as a huge free agent sign. And I know some people might have been looking for a bigger splash, but for what the Pacers were looking for in terms of you know looking to improve defensively, bring in winning, and someone that can be effective in transition, Bruce Brown checks all those boxes. Setting the pace, going to the top. Setting the pace, going to the top. This is your number one podcast. Sweeping every team. We gonna need a mop. Smooth. Mm-hmm.